So to understand diverticulitis, it's very important to understand diverticulosis first. And what that is, is actually having pockets in the colon. And these pockets in the colon can get impacted with stool and the area can get inflamed and can lead to diverticulitis. So patients that are having an active flare of diverticulitis may have left lower abdominal pain as the sigmoid colon is the most common area of the colon that gets diverticulosis. Um, they may also have fever. They may have change to how their bowels are working. So they may have diarrhea, constipation. Uh, these patients may have fever or they may just feel unwell. So diverticulitis is a very common reason for patients to present to the ER. One of the most common for abdominal complaints, whereas diverticulosis is very common amongst most patients over age 50. So there are things that people can do to prevent diverticulitis or diverticulosis, and there are some things that you can't control. So things that you can do to prevent diverticulosis or diverticulitis is having a uh, diet in it that's high in fiber, eating uh, foods that are nutritious, avoiding processed foods, smoking and alcohol use have been associated with diverticulitis and diverticulosis, um, obesity and, and sedentary lifestyle are other things that can lead to these diseases as well. There are some things, however, you cannot control, one of which is genetics. So generally for diverticulosis, it doesn't require treatment, um, something uh, surgical per se, but there are medical things you can do to keep the diverticulosis pockets clean. Uh, and that would be in the form of a fiber supplement, uh, maintaining um, a healthy amount of water intake every day. And that could prevent the pockets from getting inflamed or infected. If there is inflammation of the colon, a lot of times we can avoid surgery and treat with either antibiotics, um, IV fluids, um, and giving the bowel rest uh, for it to heal the process that's happening. Um, surgery is an option for some patients that have uh, complicated diverticulitis. So that's where the pockets get really inflamed and there could be a perforation. Uh, when there's an abscess formation, and when there's other things like a fistula. And what a fistula is, is where um, the colon gets inflamed and it sticks to other organs. That's an indication for surgery as well. Those that meet criteria for surgery, we tend to take a minimally invasive approach. And what that means is small incisions, fast recovery, and we tend to use more of a robotic approach. We use a 3D camera that's 4K, that gives us two left hands, one right hand, and the camera actually moves when we move our head, so we have more control. Um, the surgery is more precise, there's uh, less blood loss and therefore less complications. We see patients returning back to the things that they really enjoy very quickly after surgery. Generally, surgery for diverticulitis, historically patients have been in hospital for several days. Now we're seeing patients going home as quick as within 24 hours after surgery. Patients that feel like they may have symptoms related to diverticular disease or diverticulitis should definitely check in with their primary care doctor. Um, additionally, they should make sure that their colon cancer screening is up to date, and if they are already established with a gastroenterologist, they should definitely alert them of their symptoms.